is my hometown, and to me and my children, it is paradise. Over the years, she has undergone many changes. But what hasn't changed is the way the migratory birds soar across the sky. I think it is great news that they are once again arriving in flocks. This place is the paradise where they will spend the winter. Today, I took my kids to explore the wetlands. They pointed at the fiddler crabs in surprise, and I told them that the wetlands are home to many unexpected creatures. The 16.4 kilometer long Round the Bay Bikeway not only links all the beautiful sights in the Dalpung Bay area, but also draws humans closer to nature. Breathing in the warmth and friendliness of southern Taiwan, I proceed on my way. The wetlands are Dalpung Bay's most precious asset. In addition to a large lagoon and natural mangroves, there are six artificial wetlands around the area. Each works in its own way to protect the environment. Some of the wetlands purify the water flowing into Dapang Bay. Others function as reservoirs and prevent floods. Their existence keeps Dapang Bay's water quality good and stable and provides visitors with safe and clean water to play in. I'm leaning against the bridge pavilion, watching ducks foraging in the pond. Great egrets mingle among them, while common moorhens stay cool nestled in the reeds. With light breezes blowing against me, I'm feeling much closer to nature. In addition to their ecological functions, every piece of wetland here has its own distinct characteristics. All of a sudden, I see a large ship in the distance. This is the landmark of the Chi Fung Activity Center. In addition to providing flood detention, the wetland here has a bridge arching over it, adding a poetic atmosphere to the place. Let's pause for a while among these beautiful sights. Admire the groups of wild birds and the broccoli-like gray mangrove trees at the edge of the wetlands. At the Jollyan Community Wetlands, we can see ducks leisurely gliding across the water, creating ripples on the surface. There are well-arranged wooden walkways here that allow people to observe the water birds at close range, as well as take a rest. Here at Dawpong Bay, you can go for a ride around the lake on a bicycle, or choose another way to experience the beauty of the Dapang Bay wetlands. Follow me now, and we'll glide on this little boat together into the amazing world of Dapang Bay's mangroves. Going aboard a flat-bottom boat to tell tourists about the beautiful natural environment here is an important daily job for me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome on this exciting journey into the mangroves. We will be observing this natural habitat from a very close distance, so please remember not to make any loud noises that might startle the inhabitants here. When we go into the field to observe nature, we have to pay attention to a number of things. Currently, there are only six species of mangroves left in the Dapang Bay scenic area. The gray mangrove, candelia, red mangrove, black mangrove, looking glass mangrove, and incense tree. The natural distributions of these species vary from north to south, and the black and red mangroves can be found only south of Jai. Because the mouth of the Don Tre River in northern Taiwan is located at a higher latitude, only candelias, which can endure colder temperatures, can survive there. 
On the other hand, gray mangrove trees have a stronger adaptability to different environments. The gray mangrove is the dominant species here, and this is as far south as you can find it. At high tide, the roots and stems of the gray mangrove trees are submerged and unable to obtain air from the soil. But their air roots protrude from the water to keep them from drowning. The root system of gray mangroves is different from that of trees we generally see on land. These expanded root systems are intertwined with each other, one layer upon another, so that they can hold on tightly to the mud. The gray mangrove trees on the banks of the fish ponds can stabilize the soil and prevent it from collapsing. It is not easy to survive in a place like this, where the salt content is high and the sea wind strong. The gray mangroves have developed a set of unique mechanisms for survival. In order to release the large amounts of salt they absorb from the seawater, the backs of their leaves are covered with a grayish-white fuzz that removes salt while retaining water. When moisture evaporates, salt is drawn out of the plant. Another key mission of the mangroves is to provide feeding and resting grounds for fish, shrimp, and crabs. Mud skippers are little creatures that love to play in the mud. Mud skippers breathe through their skin and must keep their bodies moist. That way, they can stay out of the water for long periods of time and rest on the land. As the tide gradually ebbs, fiddler crabs begin to appear from their holes. To beat the next incoming tide, they begin to feed non-stop as soon as they climb out of their holes. The male crabs sport a large claw that can help to defend against predators, and during mating season, attract female crabs. Look at all the little creatures! But why did they disappear into their holes all of a sudden? Children, those are the white fan fiddler crabs and mudskippers. Our sudden arrival scared them, so they all retreated to their holes. But it's okay. If we keep still and wait patiently, they will climb back out soon enough. It's true! They're back out again! In addition to the creatures in the mud, gray herons and birds of the sandpiper family also come to feed in the mangrove wetlands. They have thin, long legs and pointy beaks that are well suited for foraging in the mud. This is where the water birds come to rest, and some egrets will even build their nests and raise their chicks amid the mangrove trees. We are stopping by a little island in the bay. The island looks very unusual. Why don't we visit Pearl Island in the bay while the tide is low? Unlike hard asphalt, the natural sensations of this island of oyster shells will definitely reawaken primitive feelings in your being. Grandma said that's where they used to dump the shells. The government removed many oyster racks and preserved this precious little island so that the bay could nourish more kinds of life. After you finish seeing Da Pang Bay, you can visit Little Liocho, home to beautiful intertidal zone creatures. 
when you visit Little Leocho. Be sure not to miss the rich diversity of life forms in the intertidal zones. The times of high and low tide in the intertidal zones, so be sure to check the tide predictions in advance to avoid coming at the wrong time. For a truly rich and rewarding eco-tour experience, we must always treat precious natural resources with care. When the tide recedes, what is left is a mass of colorful coral that embellishes the coast of Little Leocho in a myriad of forms. Here we can also see a variety of plants growing along the coast. Walk along the corridor and you will come to the tidal flat, teeming with life. At low tide, this place attracts many visitors who come to experience the beauty of Little Leocho's intertidal ecosystem. Visitors to the tidal flats can't help but be amazed at the diverse variety and abundance of life forms they find here. When the weather begins to cool down, the migratory birds arrive. When these birds return from afar and meet once again with the local birds, I will know that this bay has become clean enough to make them want to stay so that more people can experience this beautiful ecosystem, I will continue to protect this land and make the beauty of Da Pam Bay accessible to all. <laughs>